Today, I'm going to talk about two subjects. So stay with me right here to the very end. There's going to be a test afterwards. First, let's talk about money. Live from Minnie Van Lee's newsroom in Tucson, Arizona. Bulletin. The U.S. dollar has been the world's top reserve currency for over 50 years. Most of us know about this. Some of you don't. That dominance strongly helps to keep the value of the U.S. dollar stronger. That's your dollar. But now it seems a group called BRICS group may be moving towards the Chinese yuan to replace the petrodollar, the reserve currency, the U.S. dollar. It's what all other currencies revolve around. BRICS. What is BRICS? Well, it's what we build houses and walls with. But the BRICS I'm talking about is a new collaboration of nations to form a new currency and break away from the dollar, the petrodollar, as many have named it, the reserve currency. So I'm going to say it would be foolish to ignore what just happened because this is your money. This will determine your financial health. If the U.S. dollar diminishes, the value of the dollar will diminish also, obviously. The buying power of the dollar will fade. Yikes. It would be foolish to ignore what just happened. Very foolish. But a lot of people are. But what just happened? What's happening with the BRICS? What does all of this mean? Okay. There is, more importantly, a newly formed group of countries with medium to large economies that are discussing the possibility of forming a single currency that will be backed by gold along with other important precious metals. This group is using the acronym BRICS, B-R-I-C-S, standing for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. The first four were initially grouped as BRIC or the BRICS. In 2001, a coined term to describe fast-growing economies that would collectively dominate the global economy by 2050. South Africa was added in 2010. Russia, India, and China are among the world's 10 largest countries by population, area, and GDP. Russia, China, and India are widely considered to be current or emerging superpowers. There are more nations, especially large oil producers like Saudi Arabia, Venezuela, and others that are considering joining the current BRICS members. So this is what's just happened. Just over two weeks after Russia's state media announced that Iran and Argentina filed their official applications to join BRICS, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and Egypt began the process of making the same move. Okay, so this is what's happening. This is what's now happening, and it would be foolish to ignore that it is happening. How an expansion of BRICS will play out remains to be seen. It's a lot of opinions out there. The BRICS were originally identified for the purpose of highlighting investment opportunities. At this time, though, Brazil, China, and Russia are already trading certain products in their own currency. They're bypassing our own reserve currency here in the U.S. But since 2009, they have increasingly formed into a more cohesive geopolitical block with their governments meeting annually at formal summits and coordinating multilateral um, policies. And their, their next one is due in August of this year. I did some research trying to wrap my head around this information on who the BRICS are and what are their future plans. Could this be the end of the petrodollar down the road? Possibly. There has always been talk about losing the petrodollar and ultimately fading out the U.S. dollar and its um, value. So that's a big question. How might this affect you and me? The U.S. dollar has been the top reserve currency for over 50 years. That dominance strongly helps to keep the value of the U.S. dollar stronger. That's your dollar. That's my dollar. If the Chinese yuan becomes the reserve currency, 
the value of the dollar will fall even further than it has. This could cause interest rates to rise and wild swings in the commodity markets, especially in oil. The continued fall of the dollar's value, that would be higher interest rates, continued inflation. None of this is good news for consumers all over the world, actually. I certainly don't have the answers, obviously, and I'm not a financial expert by any means. I do know that our reserve currency keeps our U.S. dollar higher in value. So what I wanted to do is make you aware of what's going on in the world around us. To me, it appears that Russia and China especially are trying to make major economic changes that just really don't mesh well with what has been business as usual, especially here in the United States. My viewers are from many nations across the globe. If you are watching from outside of the USA, let me know what your take on this is. I've gained many subscribers just recently from India, so welcome, by the way. We all want to win. I want everyone to have what they need to be happy and to succeed and thrive with all the necessities met in their homes as well as their families. And that includes all over the world. We all deserve to be happy. So what's your take on this? Please let me know in comments below. Are there any expert economists out here? Let me know. I'm not an expert. This subject just keeps popping up in the news lately. So I wanted to discuss it with you, my friends. As always, I relate all subject matter to the nomad life. How does this impact life in the USA and in van life? I've said many times to get everything in order just in case of disaster. Times are unpredictable right now, aren't they? So next I wanna discuss getting some things together. Even if you're in a house, you're not a nomad yet, or you're thinking about it, or you never think about it, you still need to prepare for certain things coming up. So the second subject is about that. I don't know how these two subjects are related. I did want to talk about the bricks because I've been just reading so much about it and gaining information on that. But I did talk to my wonderful friend, George, in Australia. Hey, George, shout out. And we've been friends for a couple of years now. And I asked him what he thought about all of this. And so we had a little discussion on it. He's always, George, you've always wanted to do the nomad life, but you're in Australia and you have a really, you have a brand new home actually over the past couple of years. And so you've not really gone for the nomad life. So George asked me about, should he get some of the USB gadgets that I've been lately talking about? And he said, what about a power station? Should I get one of those for my home? And you know what I said? I bet you know what I said. I said, absolutely, absolutely. And I said, what I'll do is I'll get together a little system for you that would be easy for you to use inside of your home. The grid can go down at any time, everybody. And you've got things in your refrigerator. You want to keep your refrigerator going. Or there could be a blackout. There could be an EMP. There could be all kinds of things that could happen. I mean, we just got over COVID and I'll tell you, Australia went through quite a bit longer than any of the, of some of the other nations around the world. They really had um, Australia locked down for a long period of time. So you just never know what could come up. So I did look through and I put together a little system for him and we're still gonna talk about it. So that's what I wanna talk about next is getting, even if you're in a home, to getting yourself a system where you don't have to just totally depend on electricity. Now I did notice that in looking on Amazon, Jackery has an even larger power station system and um, solar panels. They have uh, a little bit over 3,000 watts. Can you imagine? That would be perfect for a home. Now, I did notice that I think it weighs about 100 pounds, the power station, but they have it They have it on like a rolling, almost like a little small um, dolly or power, or um, uh, we, a, a little 
truck. What do they call that? I always call them a dolly. But they actually have a dolly for it so that you can move it around throughout your house, wherever you need it. I think that is a really good idea to get something like that. And what they include with it are two 200 watt solar panels. Now I did tell George that he's gonna need to get an extension cord, but I, if he's gonna order it, I want him to first get it together and then let me know what the connectors are because I didn't have time when I put it together. I was kind of doing other things that I would, I would have to do some research on, is it to plug it in, is it an eight millimeter? And are they still using MC4? Because when it comes to power stations and solar panels, there's different connectors. There's all kinds of, there's an Anderson and there's um, the MC4 and believe it or not, there's even one more. I forget the name of it. So there's different connectors, but I think an extension cord would be really helpful because that way he can keep his power station inside the house and then run a long extension cord. They can go up to 25, 30 feet and run it outside and put your solar panels outside or maybe even put them on the roof if there would be like lots of, if he would worry about or any of you would worry about him being stolen. Like if there's crime, if there's some sort of a disaster, there will be increased crime. Oh, you can count on that. People are gonna wanna take what they can get. So I almost think it'd be better to, if you could get that, your solar panels on the roof and then run the extension cord down. Of course, you can always get solar going. And then, but you, it's a whole different system. A, a power station like my Jackeries, I mean, there, everything is contained. The controllers inside, the batteries inside, the inverters inside, everything's in there working. The only thing you need is the solar panel. But I think that's well worth it. If the grid goes down, you're not just gonna be able to plug in your power station to power it back up. So that's that. He loves, he bought a couple of these lights. He said, these lights are so awesome. And I know a lot of you have bought these. These are very awesome. And it's USB charged. We're getting a little bit, I think, well, I have. I've gotten completely away from things that use batteries because you have to keep rebuying those batteries. Now, you can get rechargeable batteries, but you still need to plug that in. I think USB is the way to go. USB plugs are almost everywhere. If you go into a hotel room now, you've got the USB plugs. My, your power station had USB. You can walk around with um, just a, you can walk around with a portable um, USB, a power, little power bank. They call them little power banks. You can put them in your bags, in your fanny packs, your backpacks, yeah. So what I do, with I like through night, through night. And all of my flashlights, I have quite a few now, all of my flashlights are USB charged. That's why I love through night. I don't have to worry about getting batteries. Isn't that wonderful? I do also think it's a good idea to get yourself a butane stove or a propane. I like the butane. You know, there's so much easier to use and you can start kind of, if you're in a home, you can start stockpiling this. Have yourself a system where you can cook and have it that you can do it inside. It might not always be, you say, well, I got a grill outside. It might not always be, can do, if you're hiding in your home, you want to have something you don't want to be running outside all the time, right? So what I told, <laughs> <laughs> what I told um, George is I said, look, you want to be a nomad. Why don't you just pretend to be a nomad? Pretend it for a while. Start picking up some items that we use, that us nomads use in, in our everyday life. Get yourself a nice USB fan. Yeah. And start using it. Um, at least have them somewhere that you have access to them because if something does go down now how is this coordinated with the bricks and 
let me reiterate. That's why I said, watch this till the end. I'm going to reiterate. They do. I've read and I watched videos and I read about this possible new Chinese yuan currency coming down the road. It's, it's marching forward, everybody. That it's going to be a while. It's not going to... Our, the, the reserve U.S. dollar, the reserve currency, the petrodollar is basically... It's the strongest currency out there, okay? For now, for now. So I like to kind of look ahead and see what's going on. But I did want to let you know about this. And actually, Paul's the one that alerted me to it. And it kind of freaked me out. <laughs> I, won't, I won't lie, it did. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So I wanted to do more research. And I wanted to bring this to you because I was thinking, maybe you haven't heard about it either. So what I... What I suggest that you do and prompt you to do is keep your eyes and ears open to what's going on. Divest in some gold and some silver. Do it. If you're going to do it, Paul did tell me gold has gone up just a little bit and so has silver. If you're going to invest in it, I would do it now within the next month. I really would. But we've got a few years, don't I? I'm trying to freak anybody out. But I did want to alert you to this. We we possibly have a few years. It's on down the road. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. Like I said, everything keeps changing. So I think in our lives right now, we need to be at peace. But we need to have our eyes and ears open to what is going on around us. And make changes. Diverse our, um, our financial uh, wallet, our portfolio. Diverse it a little bit. And I think we should just all kind of just realize that not everything stays the same. I did read that it, when, when it comes to currency, reserve currencies, that they do change about every hundred years. So we may be due, you know, for a change coming up. So, okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you want more videos like this, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and share this video with your family and friends. This is some good information here. And please go to minivanlee.com for any of my products, net gaiters, exercise videos, and um, I got the book. I got the link to the book, but you can go on Amazon and find my book. It's uh, just type in Minivan Lee, the book, and I'll tell you what. That book has all the list you would need for this subject. All the USB um, gadgets that I use and gadgets. I think I even have one in there, gadgets that I would like to have. So minivanlee.com for the, all of that stuff and Amazon for the book, How to Live in a Minivan, the Minivan Lee way. So until tomorrow, everybody, I love you. And from my newsroom, Minivan Lee's newsroom live from Tucson, Arizona. <laughs> Bye, everybody. I love you. Bye.